So as I mentioned earlier, if you're shooting in RAW, your pictures need sharpness. Um, and actually, I'll go to this picture really quick just because it's a really good example. It's got a lot of fine detail in it. So again, this was taken with a $4,000 camera. Um, and it looks pretty detailed, right? But once you really start sharpening your photos, you realize how much detail the stuff really still needs. So there's a little bit of sharpening by default. I didn't do this. Lightroom did it. If I start bringing this up, sometimes it's good to like overdo it. Right, so that you can really see the effect it has. I'm going to go in a little closer. You see I'm kind of making like noise in here. It's starting to look, I don't know, not so great compared to like here. Now this is really fuzzy though. So I usually like to do this with one by one. I just wanted to show that to you. But um, I might go a little bit higher than I planned to in the beginning just to like get a good idea of what kind of effect it's going to cause, even if I see a little bit of graininess. And then I set the next two. So I think the most power that you get out of these sharpening sliders is if you use the Alt key with them. Because when you use the Alt key, it kind of shows you what it's doing under the covers. So what it's doing is it's taking the edges of things and it's applying like a halo on them so that those uh, edges pop more and look sharper. Right? It's a trick. Right? It can't really make the photo sharper. Um, so I look for the edges that matter the most to me, the ones that I want to be in contrast, and I kind of make this halo just large enough for those to kind of pop. If there's a lot of other little details around those halos and you make those halos really big, it's going like, uh, to basically ruin detail in your images. So you know, this is one of those things where there's not an exact science and you just need to play with it and practice with it on a lot of photos. But my general flow is I will pump the sharpening up a decent amount. I'll then focus on the edges that are most important to me and see if there's, you know, if they kind of pop with this amount of radius. Detail is for like fine detail type stuff, like textures on rocks, you know, um, you know, basically texture type data. And if you overdo that, you can also, you know, uh, ruin those details, right? You don't want to overdo it. And then the last thing is masking. And masking is really, really important. And it is the most important thing to use with the Alt and the Option key. Because what masking does is it tells it to only apply the sharpening to certain parts of the picture. Because usually you don't need to sharpen everything, right? Um, the whole photo in general needs a certain amount of sharpening when you're shooting raw. But you may, like certain things in particular, like big continuous tones, uh, like sky and skin tone or water, since we're all underwater photographers, when you overly really sharpen them, you start seeing like a grain in there, right? It doesn't look very good. So if you hold this masking down, and I start to move this, everything you see in white right now is going to get sharpened. If I start moving the slider over, it starts, everything you see in black is not going to get sharpened. It's almost like a, uh, a stencil. As a matter of fact, I usually like to do this full screen, right, or seeing the picture fit so that I can really get a good idea. So like now, I'm not sharpening my sky, I'm not sharpening most of my water, I'm just sharpening those details in the ice that I wanted to capture, right? So I don't know if you can tell, but that's unsharpened, right? That's sharpened. It's a pretty big difference, yeah? And originally, when we first looked at this picture, I thought it looked semi-sharp, you know? Once you start actually sharpening your photos, you realize how much they really need it. Um, and just going back to like how we were originally.